are thinking about these things. I'm not. <laughs> well, um, the out of the body experience means body is a shell. You know, body is a shell that uh, a constitution uses for experiencing. We have taken this body for a particular period of time, you know, from your birth till death. And each stage we experience a particular emotion, particular reality, particular event, something we experience. And each time, with each passing year, there is a difference in it. The same thing which you experience at the age of 15 may not have any value at the age of 30. So there is an evolution happening over time. So body is a material we have used only for experiencing. And of course we can say expressing our constitution. Remove the expression side, there is only experience. And what is the platform of experience? Earth is the platform. So what the earth can provide you, you are experiencing using the body. And then there are various gadgets in the body called eyes, ears, nose, tongue, skin, all these things are used to experience various flavors of the platform called earth. Understand how the, what, why the body and how the body. These are the two answers, right? Body is a material, a tool for experience and the senses and the uh, organs of action and organs of perception are for <coughs> experiencing the flavors of the earth. Now, a soul can exit out of the body and come into the body any time it likes. The only material which has 100% free will while in life is your soul. 100% free will means it can leave the body at will, but it doesn't. Soul is like the petrol of the car. The petrol creates or delivers moment, movement. Likewise, the soul delivers movement of the body, including movement of the mind, movement of the intellect, movement of ego. Soul provides it. But while you are living, you wouldn't think about all this. That is why we do not analyze life. We experience life. When you analyze life more, we go to asylum. <laughs> Otherwise, we live and experience and we are peaceful people. No problem. So, soul's role is providing the momentum. Momentum for what? Movement for what? Traveling through time till death. And what is death? Shedding the body and taking another body. That means you delivered your rental car back and took a better car. So there is a gap between these two. You have to check in the old car and take a new car. That is what is the life and the death and life. So understand this. In this mode, you can come out of the body and re-enter the body. All these things. Correct? Did, did you get the clarity about this? Yeah. Now, um, when you are in deep sleep state. Everybody goes through deep sleep state, which is almost three hours every night. That is the time when you are actually recharging your recharging your system, like charging the battery of your phone. You plug it in and in two or three hours it's charged. That is the only time when you are completely unaware of yourself. You have left your body. Not necessarily leaving the body as death, but it's a state of death. So every night we experience a state of death. But we have a larger dream state. When a person has a larger dream state, they usually sleep more. Because they are active in that state. And that state also consumes energy. <laughs> Whatever state that consumes energy is equal to waking state. Means that is an active state. So, waking state, now here, sitting here, I think most people are awake, uh, we are consuming energy. Likewise, the dream state also we are consuming energy. When you become more and more connected to your awareness, the dream state starts reducing. Because you will actually go to the level where only deep sleep is important. That's why some people sleep only 2-3 hours. Because dream state, dream state is not necessary. There is a waking state with full awareness and a deep sleep state. Dream state starts reducing. So during deep sleep state, sometimes the soul or the, the constitution, when I say soul, soul understands soul is just the petrol. 
when I say constitution, understand the constitution includes your character, your destiny, means the experience that you wanted to have with this body, also uh, the model or what you call the, the constitution. Constitution is what you are made up of. Body. Yeah, not the body. Constitution, which that is, these are the three things that the soul carries when it leaves the body. The character, the constitution, that you have a constitution, you have a particular mold. That is why people say the same eyes travel through all the lives. People recognize people by seeing the eyes. Because if you have taken a thousand incarnations, you have carried the same eyes. Why they say? Because the constitution continues. Character continues. And desires change, so destiny changes. So these are the th three things and the, the soul is Soul is, if soul is you, you are carrying these three things in the bag. Your bag contains your constitution, character and the desires which become your karma, which your destiny. These are the things. So, when, why you have taken a body is because you have these things to, to experience. That is why. But a body is, is just like a car. You are inside and there are still space. So, other souls also can enter and sit down inside and they may not disturb you provided they are having their own experiences sometimes when you when there is no experience happening they may interfere so some of the thoughts some of the activities that you do may have an involvement of the other entities this is possible so negative or positive depending depends on your your constitution whether you are you are eligible to attract negative the negative will enter. If you are positive by nature, sometimes positive can enter. So, when you chant a lot of mantra, you are connected to consciousness, you are connected to your master deeply, nothing can enter. Because you are, you will be occupying the whole, you will be very fast. You will be sitting in the whole car. You see? <laughs> there is no space more for anything else. So, what you can fill yourself up is your energy. You become very energetic through chanting or through connecting to your master and you are fully occupied in the consciousness of your master, guru, then nothing else can sit in you. Then you are full and total inside your own skin. That is the time when nothing else can enter. Otherwise, if you are exploring, you do not even know what you are exploring, you are walking around, then there will be many people sitting in there. So then, this you can see. This is why some of the people say exorcism and all these things because most people do not know what they are doing and they have a big big house but occupying one room there are another 20 bedrooms so other people will be staying they would not even know that other people are staying in the bedroom <laughs> other bedrooms unless they collide so this is the way it's operated so and now there are numerous mechanisms courses various methods for astral travel and all these kind of things they if you are immature in doing that and just experimenting with it, you will encounter a lot of difficulties because there are numerous entities possible waiting for an experience through a body. They may not have the power to create another body like you have done. If you have clarity about your destiny, if you have clarity about your destination, you have clarity to take a body. Then you will have a life. So many of them do not have it. They are confused beings. They have collected so much of data but they don't know what to do with it. So what they do? What they do? They just live with it. And when they leave, they do not know where to go. This is why sometimes you say we need to be connected, connected to a very powerful master who is traveling in, a, in the right direction. The right direction is liberation. Direction of liberation. So if you are connected to that kind of a master, then you have nothing to worry. That is why the proximity of master, scriptures say proximity of master is important. Master should be connected to the consciousness, otherwise it's just a, another uh, insecure being you are connected to. So, this is the in nutshell about the whole tapestry. So, uh, uh, if you are weak by nature, weak in the sense you are not occupying the whole space, you are, you are procrastinating, lethargic and not doing much, then other entities can occupy. I'm not saying you will occupy it. They can. Sometimes they don't. Because if they can't use the body to their purpose, they won't. 
So, uh, but if you are energetic and you are, you are filling yourself with the right energy, nothing can occupy you. These are just like negative people. They are not negative. The nature is towards neg being negative. Negative means procrastinating, lying, greedy, you know, the ignorance, ignorance oriented, yeah? tamas oriented. Otherwise, brightness oriented, loving, kind, compassionate. This also can happen. But those entities always have the power to take another body. <laughs> you know, those who cannot take another body are confused beings. So they sit inside and they try to drive you to a different location. But uh, it's almost very simple. If you feel inclined to connect to a master or God or a, or a powerful tradition, it shows that your soul is in charge. It shows. Because there's no deviation, there's no diversion. Otherwise, the other one will say, go to the path, this is boring. That's the answer. So if you are uh, conscious, consistent, and also with conviction, connecting to a path of brightness, that means your soul is in charge. Nothing can deviate you. Others will try. Even people will try. See, there are... I was talking about uh, visions, right? Some people say, hey, I just had a vision of Jesus. He came and spoke to me. And he told, don't do this, do that, and kill that guy, etc. <laughs> so, please understand, a person of that power, a Jesus, uh, or the consciousness of uh, uh, a being like Jesus, will never tell you to harm. He will, even if, if he's communicating with you, he will say, be compassionate, be kind, you know, don't be violent in thought, word, or action. These are the messages a very high entity will give you. So, if a, if, a, if a powerful master like Jesus comes, he will elevate you. So, if somebody says, I spoke to Jesus and he said that, give everybody poison, that is not Jesus. That is some entity appearing to you in the form of Jesus. That can happen. But you will be deluded. So, how do you know whether you are deluded? When this answer is of a negative nature. That means it destroys something or somebody. That means it is not from the right source. This is how you need to know. When you are constantly thinking about negative things, understand the guidance is not from the positive. So then you will know. That time what we can do? Connect strongly to the positive. Saying this, I surrender to you in the path of liberation. So a lot of people have visions of Jesus, Buddha, Krishna, everybody comes and talks to them. But uh, understand this is mind projection also, projection from the mind. Mind projects something which you crave for. So if you crave for, a, for an encounter or a discussion with Jesus, mind projects it. And mind tells you, you have had it, you have got it. Then you are peaceful for the time being, but nothing has happened. But I'll tell you one example. One uh, man came and met me in, uh, in India and he said uh, his wife is deeply connected and both of them are deeply connected to a great master who is not in the body now, but a very powerful master, an avatar kind of personality. And uh, he appears to her and keeps telling her, transfer so much money to the account. And it's not, uh, not to a person like found or anything, to the association or to the organization so it's 100 percent legitimate so one time he came and said please transfer 100 and 100,000 rupees to this account so she did that because she believes in him she is awed that he came and told her this and that continued and every week there will be two or three times this master appears and tells her in the vision so she transfers all the money. She was transferring money. All their savings were transferred over a period of time. After transferring the income, salary, and they almost reached a level where there is hardly any money to transfer. So this uh, husband came and asked me, Monji, what do you think about this? I said, that's not from the master. True masters need nothing from you. Because the money belongs to them anyway. Whether it is in your pocket or in the pocket of, or in the association, organization, it does the same. So, great masters, true gods, they are all providers. Like I was telling Jennifer now, you give. Don't think who is getting it and don't ask for anything. Don't expect anything. So, you are free. So, all the great masters operate in that level of freedom. 
So they do not want anything from you. They are here to give. So why do they say transfer this money? So obviously, it's not the master. I said, bring her to me. So they brought, I said, do you have faith in me? She said, yes, when I look at you, I see masters. Okay, stop transferring money for now. If there is any problem, so then she said, oh, I might get a curse from the master. I said, no true masters ever curse anybody. Why do they sit and curse? Instead, they can bless, right? So nobody is interested in cursing you. Nobody is interested in your money. Nobody is interested in your property or wealth. This is yours. So yours means although also it's temporarily yours. You can't eat it or you can't keep it, take it when you go abroad. It's all here, right? So nobody is interested. And then stop giving. If there is any curse, I handle it. It's my responsibility. So she stopped. Again, there were a couple of times vision, but she kept quiet. Then the vision stopped. So what was this happening? It is definitely not that master. It is some entity taking the form of the master and guiding this person, misguiding this person, and the person thought it's the same. So we need to be very practical when, we, when it comes to spirituality. If a vision is happening and it is sucking your blood, Definitely that's not the master. Understand, in the white path, everything is about liberation. All things are about liberation. There is nothing else than liberation. There are no two agenda, one agenda, liberation. Liberation is right now, not tomorrow, nor in the future. We have no clue about the future. We have finished the past. Past is finished, you can do nothing about it now. Future is yet to be. Today is the only point in time where you can experience anything at all. So that is exactly what any true master or any true God or any true religion tells you. It will never say harm anybody, kill anybody, you know, destroy this piece of something. Never. So if you are aware of that, your energy will be fu fully occupied or the body will be filled with your energy. And if you are walking that path, Nothing can touch you. Be aware, be clear.